What's going on operators and welcome to another video. Today we are at an undisclosed location. I'm hanging out with a good buddy of mine and we are going to see what is behind this door. Before we get started though, if you enjoy this video, please make sure to leave a like and become a subscriber. If you haven't already, we'll have more of these types of videos coming for you. Uh, and besides that, if you just want to apologize about the audio quality here, we didn't bring the cameras or you know any of that stuff just because I actually wasn't planning on filming today. Um, but it, it's just way too cool. So let me go in there. Uh, I'm going to grab my friend Max and uh, we're going to show you his gun room and uh, talk about a little bit about his collection and sort of where he got everything and what everything is. Uh, it, it's a really nice little collection there uh, and definitely zombie apocalypse ready. So let's go ahead and open this door and have a look at what's inside. <laughs> oh man. All right. So uh, we may have to actually pan out a little bit here with the wide angle lens because there's a lot going on here there's literally guns everywhere max how are you oh, i'm not doing too bad <laughs> <laughs> thank you for this opportunity um i knew you had a gun room i didn't know it was this cool so um i guess what i want to do is maybe just um kind of go maybe from left to right and uh just talk a little bit about each one of the pieces that you have here and kind of maybe a little bit of a story behind them um where they're from what they're chambered in um uh, Something along those lines. All right, sounds good. We can get started with uh, these guys up here, and I noticed that you have uh, one that uh, is an empty spot up there. Is that? Yeah, that's actually my current hunting one I use right now. It's uh, just a bison in uh, uh, five five six. So oh, okay, the one I shot that was the uh, sixteen inch. Yes, yeah, sixteen inch. Okay. Yeah. cool, cool. Yeah, nice. That one, so uh, that one's already packed up for a hunting trip tomorrow. <laughs> nice. And what are you hunting? Uh, right now, it's just coyote because uh, we're just trying to, I guess. Uh, Put down the population so we have some more deer around okay fair enough so a little bit of pest control then of course that's nice, nice go ahead and move on to this After guy that, right here got, uh, nice chris vector uh short barrel and uh good old 22. 22 long rifle man that looks dope and what do you have uh, as far as optics on there because that looks uh, pretty fancy uh yeah so it's just a right and um red dot with uh three times manic fire oh, wow all right Pretty nice. Uh, it's actually kind of reminds me of what I have on my Tavor. I have the uh, little uh, EXPS3, I think it is. Um, oh, yeah. the, the little hollow dot uh, and um, a little uh, 3X magnifier as well. So yeah, yeah. it's definitely nice. Um, cool. And then we've got this guy down here. What is this? Oh, that is um, the GSG16. Oh, dude, I used to have one of these. Yeah. So mine was a little bit different though, because I noticed the stock here is yeah they did the, some change on the stock and actually the grip they've actually upgraded to a lot better because yeah the first version the grip felt like just like cheap plastic that's, Ooh. yeah yeah that does feel a lot nicer i remember the one that i had um it actually had like the the large faux suppressor on the end i noticed yeah. that uh this one is the this short one is version. a little bit shorter but the sad part is again so basically it's shorter from the front but again to keep in with uh loss for canada the stock is fixed to basically it can't get any shorter than that. And do the magazines, uh, spare mags still fit in the uh, in the stock? No, not for that one. It's uh, I actually like the stock a lot more than the other one. The other one was, uh, it felt like it was a little over-engineered. A little, yeah, that and at the end of it, it was, even if you put the magazines, yes, they're nice and accessible, but they're in the way all the time. Absolutely. Moving right along, we've got this beauty down here, and this yeah. looks like a nice shoddy. Yeah, it's a 12 gauge uh, the operator Canuck. Oh, the Canuck. Okay, yeah. so very similar to the one that I used to have. It was yes. basically a, a Benelli clone, right? Yeah, it's a Benelli clone. I think the only difference is I have an upgraded uh, foregrip that allows me to have uh, basically just a grip on there too. That is, wow, that, that feels really good. That's a nice molded grip. Yeah. And um, yeah, pretty much everything is exactly the same. As you can see, the stock, very Benelli-esque. In fact, I, I think I did a review on that. Maybe we'll uh, we'll put it up here somewhere. So don't want to obstruct your face. We'll, we'll put it here. <laughs> if you haven't seen that, the uh, Canuck Operator Elite, uh, that's basically the same thing. Obviously, Max's is a little bit nicer. You got like a little, is that a little holographic or a red dot? Or what is that so up there? So Holosun's basically, it's closer to holographic, but it's still basically a red dot. One thing I just love from them is uh, battery life is re phenomenal on them. They are solar charge and also uh, you don't actually, they uh, turn on by movement. Solar charged? Yeah. Really? How does, 
How does that work? Is it like yeah? There's a little solar panel on top. No way. That's yeah. so really it just cool. Helps keep the battery off the bit, and the fact that you don't have to manually turn it on. It's basically if you grab the gun and it shakes, it basically just turns on your optic right away. So yeah, a little bit of a workspace down here, but I uh, I can't help but notice this. I, I feel like maybe we we tease it a little bit and we get back to it. Uh, we are going to be reviewing this on the channel as well. So again, guys, I do become a subscriber if you'd like to see that. That is the Bren two. Yeah, Bren two. Very nice. Let's uh, let's check out this one in the top here. This is a cross rifle, isn't it? Yeah, the Sig Cross and 308. Wow, that is beautiful. And uh, that one is a 16 and a half, 18 inch barrel? 16 and a half. Okay. That's technically my rifle when I use uh, for bear hunting. Bear hunting? <laughs> yeah, hence why a bolt action rifle has a red dot on it, a tilted red dot. Okay, the canted red dot there, yeah. Okay, that's actually really smart. I do remember shooting that, uh, it was a couple of months ago, wasn't it? It was yeah. uh, winter time. Yeah, <laughs> and, compared uh, to your, uh, shoots great, uh, <laughs> but compared to your Atika, so much more kickback. So yeah, I was gonna say, really, really accurate rifle, um, but in my own personal experience, let me see if we can actually, there we go. Um, in my own personal experience, I found that the, the cross rifle was uh, very accurate, but it definitely beat up my shoulder. A little bit, yeah. a little bit more than the Tika, also in 308. Yeah, uh, which uh, yeah, did a definitely not well. the rifle that you want to <laughs> shoot all day. When you shoot in a couple rounds uh, for uh, hunting, not bad, but for a full range day, it isn't. That you're gonna have a sore shoulder. Fair enough. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, and look at the next one here. So what do we have right here? That is the Tavor Seven and 308. Ooh, another 308. I like the muzzle break on that, and uh, looks like we've got is that a Voodoo up there or what is that? Uh, Ryden also. Um, oh, Ryden, okay. Yeah, Ryden, just a regular red dot with a three-time magnifier. Very nice. And yeah, that is really, really cool. This is So this is the, uh, the X95 is a bigger brother then, basically. Yes. Yeah. So still a bulb pop. Um, what, what are your feelings on bulb pops in general? I mean, obviously you own one, um, but... For at least the experience I've had, reloading a bit more um practice to, at first but once you get used to it they're very uh in, uh, they're very easy to use uh, pretty yeah. pretty compact too right oh, so exactly. nice nice and tighter spaces and easier to kind of to handle once uh, as you said you kind of oh, get yeah, used definitely. to it it's uh basically you have the exact same length of barrel and everything but such in a smaller package we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next one here and what is this it's, it looks like you got an eotech on there with um, a 3x magnifier i'm guessing yes very nice. So what do we have here? This is the BT uh, APC223. Ooh, okay. And is that is that 223 wild or is that just strictly 223 running? 223 wild. Okay, yeah, so you so can shoot 5.56 five, yeah, out of it. Yeah, 5.56 five, and uh, 223. Anything uh, kind of interesting about this that kind of stands out? Maybe uh, like a, a story or um, any unique features that this one has that the others don't? Um... Technically, it was, uh, you could say, more my uh, first rifle I, that I had before the Bren II. Uh, love it, though, compared to the Bren, way heavier. Really? Yeah. So, Almost. is that just materials, or is it mostly, I mean, what what is it that adds all that weight, you figure? It's your material, yeah. yeah. It's constructed like a tank, but the weight behind it, you can feel it. Especially when you start adding a couple accessories to it, it really uh, weighs you down, that's for sure. I don't know, we kind of kind of cut down to this one a little bit here so uh this obviously a very very iconic firearm one that uh we've seen a lot in, in movies and video games especially for me i played a lot of splinter cell so you know there's there was a uh, huge references to the p90 um in in those games obviously in, in popular culture uh how are we able to get this on there because that actually looks like an official fn suppressor which are not technically legal in canada so it is technically an official fn suppressor but just the outer casing uh the inter uh, the internals were never added it's uh, basically the my buddy that had bought the rifle knew uh the manufacturer for it so he was able just to get the casing for me very cool so just kind of going for the looks while still uh keeping yeah. in line with uh, some of our crazy laws which you know, you would think suppressors would be okay because they're not like you expect uh, after you watch, you know, uh, John Wick or something along those lines. You know, you're not going to be getting into a firefight. In a I mean, nobody would be getting into a firefight in a mall to begin with. But if yeah. you did, suppressors would not make it quiet. Um, so, yeah, it kind of sucks that our laws prohibit them because they're actually really great at, uh, well, uh, reducing noise pollution for our neighbors. 
Um, so what what kind of setup do you have here with regards to this? This is obviously very foreign if if you're used to you know standard rifles and standard optics. Yeah. So, so what, this is actually completely stock L's in the barrel. Wow. So other than the barrel, this is this is how it comes. Yep. Including the little sight up here? Oh, no, sorry, the red dot that, that I did. Okay. Because, yeah, it does actually have the regular, like, actual peep sight right into... Uh, right through the rail. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Very cool. And this is also full semi, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is a really, really cool design. Um, and I'm guessing that one shoots the 5.7. Am I wrong, or...? I believe so. Yeah, it is the yeah five seven by twenty eight. Wow, look at that! I mean, those things are actually quite expensive. I uh, I recently went to the range, well, recently, a few few months ago, with a buddy of mine. Let me see if we can actually get this. There we go. Um, and he actually got himself a uh, a Ruger five seven pistol. This was literally mm. he he got it transferred right before everything stopped. Yeah. Um, and those like that ammo is so expensive. It's about a dollar a round. Close to that, yeah. And they're so small. It's like yeah. it's like a baby five five six almost. But the speed they come out of. It's pretty ridiculous, huh? Yeah. Wow. Cool. Um well yeah, so five seven definitely a little bit harder to get your hands on in terms of I mean it's not the most common ammo out there. Um do you do you find it difficult to get uh, the five seven around um, here? Or? Surprisingly not, but also because I think the price is so high, a lot of stores just have a lot in stock because they're just not a lot of people buy it in giant bulk. Fair enough, and I'm, I'm guessing not everybody's running a, an FNP90 as well. Also, yes. <laughs> I guess we'll we'll move on to what we teased earlier, which is this beautiful monstrosity. And this, of course, is the CZ MS, or the Bren MS2, or the Bren 2 MS, uh, something along those lines. Bren 2 MS, yeah. Bren 2 MS, okay. So, uh, semi-auto, and this is in 5.56? Yes. Beautiful. And uh, we've got it up on the gun vise because I guess you're, you're doing a little bit of work to it. So tell me a little bit about kind of, you know, a little bit short story about uh, when you got it and then kind of, you know, bring us up to speed with what you're doing with it right now because there's yeah. obviously some upgrades on the table. Yes. Yeah, so I um, ended up because, uh, again, when they first come to, came to Canada, we uh, basically were supposed to get this version almost with the uh, longer barrel and the longer uh, forehand. But it never ended up showing up because they were mostly all shipped to uh, Ukraine. So we got the restricted versions and then got them converted to non-restricted. Wow. So I ended up purchasing uh, the longer forehand uh, just for added, uh, well, more accessories, uh, just better control. Else than that, I added a, uh, added a better trigger charging handle getting a new stock for it eotech on there and uh, you gotta love the eotech have a lamb unit on there so that's the lamb right there that's the laser aiming module and so actually i wouldn't mind if you told me a little bit about that because that's that's obviously pretty unique compared to what you have on some of the other rifles in the room here yeah so basically it has your green laser that uh, you can just see at uh, i guess with the naked eye and then it also has uh, your ir laser so you can basically use this unit with your night vision oh jeez wow okay other than that uh, anything else built in or is that pretty much it just the it two it has a uh, ir uh, uh, amplifier to or flashlight Okay, very cool. But we do have a separate flashlight on here too, don't we? Yes. Uh, with momentary switch, I believe. Uh, what's what's the muzzle there, by the way? That uh, That's a compensator of some sort? It's a blast deflector yeah, blast, or something uh, like blast that? blast deflector. So it basically just pushes everything right to the front and uh, not to the sides or the ba at the, uh, the bottom. So you don't have like a big dust up uh, for when you're shooting. I mean, that's a folding stock as well, isn't it? Yes. Really nice. In the Tipton gun device, I got one of these at home too. They're great. Not sponsored, but hey, uh, give us a call. All right, let's uh, move on to an oldie but a goodie. What do we have up there? Uh, so that one is, uh, I don't actually remember the brand that makes, I believe it is CZ. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's uh, just their, uh, basically just a regular bolt action in uh, three, uh, 30 odd six. 30 odd six. Yeah. And uh, what kind of optic you got up on there? Uh, it's, it's a Riten, uh, I, um, just a variable zoom of uh, one to 10. One to ten. Okay, yeah. fair enough. And uh, the purpose for that, just hunting, or uh, yeah, that was basically going to be just uh, a just another hunting rifle, a bit larger caliber. Fair enough. Yeah, thirty out six is definitely quite a bit of power there. Yeah. 
Pats right nice on. Punch, so think. you're probably after moose or, or something along those lines, or yeah. maybe bear. I don't know if it would be too big bear. for bear. Oh, definitely not. You can never go too big for a bear. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, cool. So yeah, 30 out six, that's pretty nice. And then below that, what do we got? We have the good old M1 Garand. Ooh, okay. So that's uh, another classic. Let's see if I can get a little bit uh, closer here. Now, obviously uh, the lighting is not gonna be perfect all the time, but you can get a pretty good idea here. I actually shot this with you, didn't I? Uh, the last time we went out to the range together. Uh, yes, we did. Very nice. Yeah, it feels, um, feels like actually pretty tame for- What it is? For an M1 Garand, yeah. yeah. The reason behind that is just the pure weight of the rifle. Yeah, it's true, yeah. It, it's kind of like uh, what happened with my Tika. Like, I remember we took my Tika T3X Tac A1 alongside that cross rifle there that we just looked at a moment ago. And yeah, I just, I, I felt like, I mean, both were very accurate. Both were very fun to shoot, but the Tika definitely beat me up a lot less. And yeah. I feel like that's kind of the same idea there. You've just got a ton of weight behind the rifle and that helps to absorb some of that, you know, uh, felt recoil. Oh, exactly. Still don't know how the hell they dragged that thing along all uh, throughout <laughs> uh, all of uh, Europe, though. No kidding. With the weight behind it. All right, so next up, we've got another Chris Vector. And uh, it seems like you really enjoy these, huh? Yep, I uh, always enjoyed shooting them. And just you could see the uh, amount of engineering that went into them. Always uh, really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Um, I remember reviewing one of these. Uh, it was actually the CRB, which I ended up buying. This was in nine millimeter. Uh, and I think this one is nine mil as well, right? Yes. And yeah, same, I mean, you know, metal faux suppressor there. Um, I really liked it myself. The only thing I didn't really like was kind of the, the front heaviness of it. Did you kind of feel the same way or? Yes, yeah. the front heaviness. And with, again, the as much as yes, the engineer is great, the fouling that comes from and like the <laughs> cleaning is kind of ridiculous yeah i had kind of an issue with that as well i mean not just uh because mine was white and not a nice fde like this which uh kudos to you you've actually done an excellent job keeping it clean but yeah the, the nine mil being a blowback system uh, definitely makes it really really tough to keep it clean yeah and also you know for those of you guys who don't know i mean this is pretty easy to take apart you've got you know a total of i think four bolts or so in total here for this to all come apart which is great. Uh, the downside is that you have to do it so often and it's actually so geometrically complex in there that it, it can be really difficult and just a complete pain in the ass to, yeah. to clean it out. Especially making sure that everything clicks back perfectly. Oh my. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but yeah, a lot of fun. And uh, what kind of optic do you have on here? Uh, that's a Vortex. Uh, oh, that's the prism, isn't it? That's the yeah. 3X prism? Yes. Okay, I had that. The, did you get this from me or was it somebody else? Uh, no, that actually I bought originally with the rifle. Okay, very cool. Yeah, yeah I remember my first optic on my first gun, which I think was my Tavor, uh, was the uh, 3X Prism. And that one, if I'm not mistaken, it's an EBR reticle. So I think it's made for 5.56 technically, right? Yes. The, the notches? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Okay, so I remember some things. So uh, moving along, I think, are, is that all the firearms? Because we've got some other goodies here, but... There's I definitely uh, other locations there are more. <laughs> well, we've got we've got one more here, uh, two more here. So let's let's have a look. So we've got uh, this is your Legion, isn't it? Yes. I'm, yeah. And then we've got a little six shooter over there. Is it six shooters? Is it five? Uh, so uh, this one right here, yeah, that's the um, uh, Smith and Weston uh, six shooter. It's a, a 357 Magnum. Ooh, beautiful. And then beside it, you have its little baby, uh, Chiapa. Um, uh, again, I believe it's a six shooter and it's a 22. That's really cool. Uh, you do have another Kiapa, don't you? Uh, I think it was the one that I reviewed. The, it was like a 22 1911. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> I do. Oh, you're hiding it. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. So yeah, we, uh, we did review on this as well. A lot of fun to shoot. I think, um, when I had it, um, the only thing that I encountered was like the rear sight was actually having a bit of a hard time standing, uh, yes, or, or right. sitting, yeah, sitting on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but lots of fun to shoot. And, um, well, I'm, I'm a bit of a whore for 1911s. Um, just love the way they feel in the hand and, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty nice. Uh, that one for 22 has got a lot of weight to it, which I really like. Yeah. Right. Cool, man. Well, I mean, other than all the fancy armaments here, uh, is there anything else you want to show us? Well, if you want to go right down to the classic, I do have a nice <laughs> Colt. Ooh. Oh. That is antique status. 
Oh man, so okay, so for antiques, you don't really need a PAL, do you? No, nope, you do not need any kind of licensing whatsoever. Wow, and this is actually quite small. I mean, my hands, as you can see, are quite large, and uh, that probably wouldn't be the most comfortable thing for me to shoot, but it feels really nicely made. And these classic Colts uh, typically fetch a pretty decent price tag. Yep, and uh, yeah, uh, shoots the 41, uh, um, what is it, a 41 long Colt? 40, uh, 45 long colt maybe right uh, give me a sec. Mm. muzzle discipline mm? muzzle discipline <laughs> my hands in the way <laughs> remember this is not a firearm uh yeah i guess but for the sake of the video muzzle discipline uh, actually don't even see it on there i think it's 41 long colt it's a weird cartridge it's, a, it's kind of an old one huh yeah Interesting. Well, the only way you can get it is um, you can only get these handmade. You can't buy these uh, from any store. What? Yeah. So I mean, they they haven't been mass produced probably for <laughs> for a few decades at least. Yeah. Right on. Very cool, man. That's really really nice. And anything else here that we've got? I mean, I'm kind of inching towards this stuff up here. I don't know if you want to talk about this, whatever that yeah, is. Um, yeah. So I do have a uh, uh, a nice uh, little. Um, night vision uh, s system wow that is pretty crazy and it's mounted to a helmet and everything so yeah i mean you're pretty much ready for zombie apocalypse whenever it happens yes i am uh, and are you comfortable talking about what's behind you oh of course <laughs> there's a nice little door here Ooh, oh my god Okay, uh, when I said that you were ready for a zombie apocalypse, I I didn't know how right I was. So this is, how, how many rounds are we looking at here? Probably around 30 to, uh, to 40,000. Jesus Christ, for, uh, that's wild. Within all my uh, different calibers that I have. And then you got this, I'm going to look behind here. This looks uh, like some kind of battle suit, man, that's crazy. Yeah, so Big it's plate a carrier and that full level four uh, plate carrier. Level four? Yeah. Wow. Uh, it's pretty cool, man. Well, uh, Max, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Thank you so much for showing us around. This is a really, really cool gun room with a lot of fun toys in it. Wait, we didn't show them the thing behind the door. Oh no, we did not. Can we? Uh, can we? Can we do? Is that fine? Is yeah. that? Uh, hold on. Let me. Let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get through here, and then. All right. Well, here we go, folks. So he is ready to go. So these are, what are these, smoke and bangs? Yes. Dang. And those, uh, those are legal, huh? Yes, they're perfectly legal. <laughs> cool. Um, now, they, they look a little plasticky to me. Uh, and, you know, with my vast video game experience, especially in Call of Duty, uh, I feel like maybe they ought to be built a little bit more rigidly if they were the real thing. So are, are so they... These are technically civilians. Uh, okay. Version of it. That's why. They're not military. And what is the big distinction then between something that would be classified as a civilian or a, or a military? So for weapon? the smoke grenades, probably not too much of a difference. Uh, for the flashbangs, uh, they're a lot... Um, the sound is definitely a lot quieter and uh, they do not uh, cause a, a more of a concussion uh, wave. Fair enough. Okay, that's... Uh, uh, pretty cool i love the henry boxes behind the door <laughs> very cool um are those uh are, are, is there stuff in there or oh, is yeah, it just a... there is. really yeah those are levers the levers and they're the collectible um trucker movement uh oh no way the ones that they got the uh they're ingrained with the yes. uh oh man no way <laughs> You know, I'm actually really glad I asked because, you know, I, I keep gun boxes around the house all the time, too, except mine are all empty because all the guns are in the safe. But, man, is that beautiful or what? So this is a three fifty seven mag? No, uh, 22. That is a twenty two. Yeah. That is probably one of the fanciest 22s I have ever seen. Love me some lever action from uh, Henry. That is absolutely beautiful. Thank you for taking this out. Wow, just look at the detail in there. I can see myself. That's how shiny it is. So, wow. And is that walnut or what kind of what kind of wood is that? If I you believe even it know. is walnut, yes. That's got a really great feel to it. I love the uh, the brass here on the end. That is just impeccable build quality. So, what I mean, why two? Why do you have them? Is just just for collecting, or yes, uh, literally the only reason? Hence, why they're in the boxes and not displayed just, at this point. It's just pure for collecting. Just yes. unfired. Yeah. Going to keep them 
as pristine as I can. <laughs> Fair enough. Mm. All right, man. Well, I've taken way more of your time than, than I had imagined. Um, thank you so, so very much, guys. Please, if you if you found this video helpful, enjoyable, uh, at least if not for me, then for Max taking the time to show us around, uh, please do drop a like. Make sure to become a subscriber. And, uh, of course, maybe uh, I'll let you hold that for a second there. With Yeah, there we go. Um, do make sure to become a subscriber. If you'd like to help the channel a little bit further, we do have some Etsy links down below. If you want to pick up yourself some uh, chamber flags or some CO merch, uh, please go ahead and do that. There is also a super thanks button down below if you'd like to buy me uh, a cup of beer or a mug of beer or a cup of coffee, your choice. Uh, but, yeah, that's going to do it for me. Um, Sorry for this sort of unconventional way of making the video today. We've just got the phone. I didn't bring my production gear with me just because I wasn't planning on doing it today. But nonetheless, very, very happy. A huge thanks to Max for showing us around. And uh, that said, I uh, hope we'll see you in the next video. Until then, thanks very much for watching and happy shooting.